which is the most vulnerable organ 5% of all trauma admission is of liver injury most common organ injured in penetrating abdominal trauma penetrating abdominal trauma it is the most common uh, most common organ injured and in blunt abdominal trauma it is the second most common organ injured because in blunt trauma the, the spleen is the most common injured organ there are two types of injury it can be penetrating or it can be blunt the ta- the uh, operation which is required in that injury both are different in the penetrating injury there, there should be surgical intervention uh, while in blunt trauma it should be conservative intervention in penetrating intervention intervention we can use after laparotomy with rooftop incision a uh, rooftop incision is necessary to assess the laceration how much amount of laceration is there then the clot and the blood should be removed uh, from the path then uh, the in liver injury the control of bleeding is must so the superior hep- uh, hepatic and inferior hepatic inferior vena cava control is required L- liver wound is sutured using specialized needle with vicryl using cooperating suture okay liver wound should be sutured using specialized ne- needle and vicryl is a substance and what is cooperating suture if these are parallel sutures in the liver so the, uh, the the perpendicular to it suture is taken it is called the cooperating sutures then after taking the suture the gel form or surgery cell is placed over it then uh, in the penetrating injury we should after all this all this we can uh, we should do uh, adequate amount of uh, blood transfusion fresh frozen plasma trans, uh, transfusion post operative bt ct is all measured antibiotic coverage with third generation cephalosporin is must blunt trauma blunt trauma conservative inter- intervention first of all it, it is assessed by ct scan here it is assessed by less uh, the laparotomy rooftop incision laceration is assessed and here it is assessed by ct scan commonly used uh, conservative intervention is the pax we put the packs between the diaphragm and liver in blunt trauma injury up to 48 to 72 hours and after it we will take the, this packs outside if it is very severe blunt trauma then we go for the surgical intervention if there is progressive deterioration and bleeding and grade uh, grade 5 grade 5 liver injury is there according to ct scan associated bowel injury is there we can go for the surgical intervention pallor hypotension tachycardia sweating these all are shock symptoms then distension of abdomen is there because of the liver injury oligouria means less amount of urine hemoperitoneum rupture of right lobe is more than left lobe because of streamline effect the rupture of the right lobe is more than left lobe biliary peritonite is there if bile leak from the injury side the bile will in the peritoneum and it is cause biliary peritonitis clinical features shock distension of abdomen oligouria hemoperitoneum or biliary peritonitis what are the investigation we go for uh, the first uh, the, this is common in many many injuries the first is chest of uh, chest x ray ultrasound of abdomen ct ct scan of chest it is most common investigation in all type of injury then we can go for the hemoglobin and blood group we go for blood group because it needs massive transfusion in the blood injury so if we know the blood group of the person or patient we can uh, uh, we can use that uh, uh, blood for transfusion then the special investigation it is fast which full form is focus assessment with sonography for trauma focus assessment with sonography for trauma and the other one is dpl means diagnostic peritoneal lavage diagnostic peritoneal lavage if positive dpl is there 10 uh, greater than 10 mm of blood loss and greater than 1 lakh cubic mm rbc or greater than 500 wbc are there we can go for thrombo 
elastography t e g thrombo elastography thrombo elastography is dynamic form of assessing coagulation status of table okay arterio we can go for arteriography arterial blood gas analysis we can this is the most common this is the special intervention we can get and this is uh, from our common sense we go for this blood group and all okay now the ct scan and uh, grades so subcapsular hematoma intraperitoneal expansion and capsular laceration subcapsular hematoma if greater than no less than 10% this is grade 1 and uh, in grade 1 there is no parenchymal expansion and the di- uh, the depth depth is less than 1 cm in capsular laceration in in the grade 2 there is uh, uh, 10 to 50 10 to 50 subcapsular hematoma and get uh, less than 10 cm diameter of parenchymal expansion and depth is 1 to 3 cm in grade 3 there is greater than 50% subcapsular hematoma and greater than 10 cm diameter intraperitoneal expansion and depth is greater than 3 and in the fourth category fifth category sixth category parenchymal disruption 25 to 75% and 1 3 1 2 3 cornet segment are involved in fifth parenchymal disruption greater than 75% and greater than 3 cornet segment are involved and major hepatic veins are injured in the sixth hepatic avulsion is there so these are the classification according to ct scan grades okay the in treatment part in treatment part first initial resuscitation is that in resuscitation we go for airway breathing and circulation checking first then coming for the channel measures iv fluids and fresh frozen plasma can be given then bladder catheterization is there because we we know that in the clinical features that is oligouria so that um, that's why the bladder catheterization is there to measure the amount of the urine then the pro, uh, pro convertin which is the factor 7 of coagulating factor it is very effective and uh, 0.6 mg per ml to 4.8 mg per ml can be given it is very expensive but it is very effective pro converting factor okay these are all are the general measures we should we must do it that uh, uh, general measure then we go for the initial conservative non operative management non operative management is there which is more common in the blunt trauma okay uh, in which uh, uh, the patient uh, this initial conservative non operative management is that the first is non progressive liver injuries in which hemodynamically stable hemodynamically stable uh, uh, ho sakte hai fir uh, lower grade 1 to 3 lower injury lower low grade means uh, this 1 to 3 categories patients then normal men- mental station uh, mo- uh, normal mental status the need of less than 2 units of transfusion uh in the, this patients go for ct scan follow up for first ct scan and then follow up the ct scan then blood transfusion and prevention of sepsis uh, then liver function test and prothrombin time is needed in non operative management first we go for the angiographic embolization which uh, success rate is very uh, very high uh, then icu management 2 to 5 days patient rest for 3 months Condi- if condition worsen from the this level we can go for the laparotomy uh, the intervention radiological measures angioembolization can be taken in pseudo aneurysm and the angioembolization complication is necrosis so the care should be taken in this ngo embolization we now for the specific treatment there are three types of treatment the first is general measures are taken then initial conservative non operative management and then the specific treatment in specific treatment there are three phase first control the bleeding means play pay or close pay closer any anything which control the bleeding the that measures should be taken first then resuscitation and metabolically ma- ma- metabolical manage temperature pt acidosis all should be managed then the third step is 
definitive procedure resection or debridement or suture it can be done uh, then the specific treatment push the first full push by direct compression we can use plug plugging the deep track injuries using the silicon tube the other one is pringle manovia to control the bleeding and pack liver wound is directly packed with mop and if there is large injury large bucket handle abdominal incision in laparotomy uh, or thoraco abdominal incision should be done if this is there is a small liver tear small liver tear vicral or pds mattress suture with placing of gel foam gel foam is for control of bleeding we can control the bleeding with pringle maneuver or blue bulldog cap clamp or the wrap with the mesh the um, liver which is called mesh hepatotherapy and tractotomy though the liver parenchyma is soft and friable liver is very very difficult to suture so because it is very soft and friable so the ligation of bleeding vessels individually on cut surface uh, is called tractotomy uh, tractotomy is uh, because as vessels are supported with fibrous adventitia liver parenchyma is soft and friable but the vessels are supported with fibrous adventitia if we like it that uh, the vessels uh, we like it that suture with the fibrous adventitia we can hold well on this vessels which is called tractotomy ligation of bleeding vessel individually on cut surface then if there is deep injury we can go for the segmental resection uh, if we segment the resection is that um, uh, regeneration of liver um, during the 4 to 6 months on the resection regeneration of liver take 4 to 6 months 80% of liver resected without com- compromising the function we can resect 80% of liver without compromising the function uh, if ivc injury is there which is very difficult we should do veno veno venous bypass is made super to superior vena cava to femoral veno venous bypass superior vena cava uh, superior vena cava to femoral this is infer vena cava is bypassed and then uh, first uh, bypass the inferior vena cava then repair that inferior vena cava injuries and uh, this is the artificial bypass in veno venous superior vena cava to femoral then if liver tear is there first suture the, the suture of liver is with coarse nets of aluminum needle coarse nets of aluminum needle and post operative management ventilator support support and other measures should be there the push plug pringle maneuver pack then uh, laparotomy for large incision small liver tear vicral or pds mattress then tractotomy then deep injuries then ivc injuries then for liver tear then post operative uh, the management the all over management in a glands so the first is control the hemorrhage by packing tractography uh, tracto, uh, tractotomy uh, mesh uh, segmentotomy transfusion control the hemorrhage first then management of metabolic distur- disturbance uh, prevention of acidosis uh, disseminate intravascular coagulation fast frozen plasma platelets for management of metabolic disturbance then monitoring monitoring with repeated ultrasonography ct scan uh, liver function test prostomin time then prevention of sepsis with antibiotic or irrigation with saline then identify and manage the complication if porto hepatic injury is there it is very th- uh, life threatening but it is rare it is like uh, it's mainly occur in penetrating trauma if porto hepatic injury is there portal vein should be sutured and a uh, common bile duct uh, a half set of one suture with over a t tube common bile duct should be sutured over t tube half set of one the complication is sequel of injury the first is shock and hemorrhage then liver abscess or septicemia 
liver and intra abdominal subphrenic abscess also complication is there bile leak bile peritonitis disseminated intravagal coagulation and complication of blood transfusion then electrolyte imbalance respiratory complications liver failure and late obstructive jaundice shock and hemorrhage liver abscess bile peritonitis disseminated intravagal coagulation electrolyte imbalance respiratory complications liver failure and late obstructive jaundice